Assalamu alaikum. Former President Donald Trump comes an inch away from meeting death. Let's have a look. If you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. what happened if you uh, want to really see something that said take a look at what happened and this is what some of the witnesses had to say all we know was shot was fired and then i jumped over the the barrier and put my hand on the guy's head that was he noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. I was, so I was looking around myself and seeing a guy on top of one of the buildings go in between one building to the next and went and told the officer that he was up there. And when I went back to my spot, I heard that people could s still see the, sh the person from where they were standing. They're like, hey man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. Went back to tell the officer that if he came over there, he could see them. And when I turned my back is when the shots, when the shots started. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof, we can see him from right here. We see him, he, you know, he's, he's crawling. Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. Now, former President Donald Trump has been released from the hospital after the assassination attempt at the Pennsylvania rally. Trump was rushed off stage by the Secret Service on Saturday after shots were fired that grazed Trump's ear that literally had him an inch or less away from death. The shooter has been identified as Thomas Matthew Crooks, a 20-year-old from Pennsylvania. He was killed by law enforcement. One attendee was killed and two others are in critical condition. Trump made a couple statements after her. This is the second one that he made where he said, thank you to everyone for your thoughts and prayers yesterday. It was God alone who prevented the unthinkable from happening. We will not fear, but instead remain resilient in our faith and defiant in the face of wickedness. Our love goes out to the other victims and their families. We pray for the recovery of those who were wounded and hold in our hearts the memory of the citizen who was so horribly killed. In this moment, it is more important than ever that we stand united and show our true character as Americans, remaining strong and determined and not allowing evil to win. I truly love our country and love you all and look forward to speaking to our great nation this week from Wisconsin. Now, these are some of the reflections after this assassination attempt on Trump that I had and I'd like to share with you. Trump said it was God alone who prevented the unthinkable from happening. This is profound. Not Jesus, not Muhammad, not anyone other. No other God but the one God, the Creator. No one could save him but Allah. It took me to the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3 of the Quran, in ayah 144, where God Almighty, the Creator, says, And it is not possible for one to die except by the permission of Allah at a decreed time. And whoever desires the reward of this world, I will give it to him. And whoever desires the reward of the hereafter, I will give it to him. And I will reward the grateful. In this situation, we can see this ayah from the Quran coming to life where he was literally an inch away from possible death, but he left with a scratch and someone else had died. I really think this is a great time, a really great sign for people to think, to ponder about the topic of death, which many people shy away from them, or they make jokes about and they quickly move on. They don't like discussing the topic, but we don't shy away from it. The obvious aim was to assassinate Trump, but someone else died.
He was spared, literally, Trump was spared an inch away from death or less. The question is, how far are we away from death? And what have we done to prepare for death? Another important reflection I had and I wanted to share with you that I hope, I really hope, takes you down the road of seeking to really know your true purpose in life and what really happens at the moment of death and after. And the reason I want to share this with you also is it's truly fascinating and eye-opening. For many, it'll be a faith iman boost, and others, I'm hoping it'll inspire them to look sincerely into this man's life that I'm going to be talking about. And for the dead hearts, I pray that God Almighty Allah opens your hearts before death reaches you, then it's too late. You've chosen for yourself the hell fire when right now it is time. It's not too late. You can change your directions towards the love and mercy of your creator Allah and his Jannah paradise. All right now, so what was the other reflection I had? It had to do, and it was around the other many assassination attempts that historical Sira, what we call them, scholars, scholars who study the life of Prophet Muhammad and the history of him, they count as many as 30 assassination attempts that were made against the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. 30. Prophet Muhammad, in the beginning of his prophethood, he had around him what you could say were bodyguards, his companions who were on full alert, full watch patrol, until this revelation came down in the Quran that states, O Messenger, convey everything revealed to you from your Lord. If you do not, then you have not delivered his message. Allah will certainly protect you from the people. Indeed, Allah does not guide the people who disbelieve. Now, this is what I call divine protection. After this, he told his bodyguards, imagine this. He gets this revelation from Allah, the Creator. And after this, he told those bodyguards, his secret service of the time to go. God will protect me. Imagine that. Just imagine Trump telling his secret service, go. Go home. God is protecting me now. You think he's crazy. And he would be. He needs the protection. It's obvious. But this is something different, totally different. This predicts Prophet Muhammad, because this is coming from the Creator, from God Almighty, telling him he's going to protect them. So this predicts that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, will not be killed by the people, by those enemies of his, and he wasn't. Point to note, think about this. If Prophet Muhammad was a liar, he would have kept his bodyguards, his security. It was a fact. People were trying to kill him. Yet, he sends his bodyguards, his secret service of that time away. He sends them away. This is unbelievable. That's why you should look into his life. This is not an ordinary man. This is indeed a messenger from the Creator Allah to you, to all of mankind, sent as a mercy to the world. And just to note how serious the situation was, his three predecessors after him, Omar an, Ali, Uthman, were all assassinated for what? For bringing the message of pure monotheism, of absolute monotheism. So after him, they were all assassinated because they were continuing bringing the message of truth to the world. Now they tried to assassinate Trump with a bullet. At that time, they didn't have bullets, but they did have boulders, which they tried to drop on the Prophet Muhammad's head, which would have killed him. They tried to poison him, but he didn't die. One of his companions who actually ate the food, he got poisoned, he died. We have so many, I'm telling you, so many of these examples. That is why you should look into his life, not from the paid truth distorters and liars, the ignorant fools. Here's one famous example when all the pagan tribes came together and plotted to assassinate him, Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. They each picked a member from their own tribe. So not only one tribe could be blamed to go with spears and kill him while he was sleeping in his bed. Again, divine intervention happens. The angel Gabriel came and informed him of this plot. So he left his cousin Ali in his place. For what? To go ahead and unravel their plot and to distribute back to the same people trying to kill him their personal expensive belongings, money, and whatever else they would leave with him because they did not have banks at that time. 
they knew him as the most trusted person amongst them. Unbelievable. That's why he had been nicknamed al Amin, the trustworthy. That was his nickname, literally, the trustworthy. I can go on and on, but these are just a few of my reflections after the Trump assassination attempt. One more thing you might be asking, why were they trying to assassinate Prophet Muhammad? Peace and blessings be upon him. If you want to make a comparison to today, he was literally going against the establishment at that time. He was going against the corruption all of the evils of society today it could be equated to the porn industry the gambling industry alcohol industry the corrupt politician the usury bankers everything that corrupts society he was up against and the main call the most important call the message he had that all this was built on was from god almighty was nothing new it started with the first man, Adam, continued with Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus. It was the calling humanity to the pure, absolute monotheism of worshiping the creator alone and not his creation. Whatever came into the existence, died, walked the earth, left the earth, had a birth date, cannot be God. So that is creation. And he was calling, just like all these prophets and messengers, like Moses, Abraham, Jesus, he was calling people to worship the one who created creation, the creator, submitting your will to God, being morally upright. And that's what Islam is, to submit your will to the will of God. Like in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. This is Islam. Now ask God Almighty. This is my advice to you, my sincere, earnest advice to you. Ask God Almighty, the God Jesus fell on his face and prayed to in the Gospel of Matthew 26, 39. He fell on his face and prayed to who himself? No, he prayed to the Creator, to the one God for guidance. And you follow that same way. Ask the Creator for guidance. Think about these reflections. And if you'd like to learn more, my gift to you is the Quran that I've quoted some of these ayats, these signs from at the deanshow.com. Go to the deanshow.com. I'll get it to you for free. And if you have any of the questions on the topic, go ahead and give us a call 1-800-662-4752 and for the trolls instead of just trolling give us a call come on man give us a call call the number ask your questions let's have a civil rational intelligent conversation and for you brothers and sisters help more people get this message press the like button leave us your comments and if you haven't already subscribe right now so you never miss a video like this again until next time, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, we've all had loved ones that passed away. A mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a close family member. But one of the mercies of our deen is that with the right intention, we can go ahead and continue to do good deeds on our loved one's behalf. And what greater of a continuous good deed, Sadaqa Jariya, than investing on their behalf in the Dean Center, a masjid and Megadawa Center that will benefit generations to come, inshallah. So click the link below, donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you.